All right, so this video we are talking about halogenation. And once again, a template reaction. You've got a basic unsymmetrical alkene. And let's say you did uh, Cl2, so just chlorine gas. You would end up with this. You are dichlorinating, or actually here, let me, so those chlorines obviously came from here and here. You're just adding chlorine, one chlorine, onto each end of the double bond. Um, now, that is a fairly simple mechanism. You've, you've seen it already a couple times in the previous videos. Double bond swings open, grabs a chlorine, kicks off the other one. You get a, a, a carbocation. Uh, so here's your intermediate. And then that other chlorine comes in attacks, and you get your final product, which is that guy. Um, so that's that's all fine and well. We've seen that other times with water or with some uh, hydrohalogen. Now let's take a look. Uh, a special case is with bromine, which I mentioned earlier. So if you take this and you go to bro Br2, you are always going to get the trans dibromo compound. And the other one, I wasn't I wasn't specific on the stereochemistry because it it can be either way with a. Uh, a carbocation, so remember the other one looked like this, and then you had a carbocation and uh, right there. The carbocation is sp3, or S sorry, sp2 hybridized, so it's planar. If you remember, sp2 is uh, trigonal planar. So if you picture a triangle flat in the screen, um, something that comes in to attack that carbocation, which is is, uh, I suppose, in the middle, if you're to, those are the three bonds coming off of it, it has a uh, hydrogen, remember? So if it, something comes in to attack that carbocation, it can come in either from, the, from above and get it, or from below and get it, from either the coming down into the screen or coming from behind the screen up behind it. So what can happen is you can get compounds where, so if that other chlorine was already there, remember, so this is this, and I was just drawing that positive charge in the middle, if that, if that chlorine is already coming out of the screen, it, that doesn't affect whether or not the second chlorine comes from above or from below. So you could end up with compounds that look like this, one second, that look like this. So you have two chlorines coming out of the screen, or you could end up with compounds that look like this. So you have one in, one out. That's This is the cis isomer, and this is the trans isomer. Trans meaning opposite side, cis meaning same side. So if you guys, you know, if you recall what trans fats are, all that means is fats that have the, that don't uh, both go the same direction. Well, we can get into that later, but uh, the basic idea is that bromine reacts differently. You will always get the trans isomer. Now, why is that? Well, if you draw out the reaction and you do Br2, what you have is something, a special intermediate called the bromonium ion intermediate. So, once again, let me uh, redraw that as the, this kind of structure. You have the double bond break out, grab the bromine. These electrons go, that makes a leaving group. And so you have this and you do have a carbocation, but that bromine still has other unshared pairs of electrons, and what it does is it comes in and attacks it by itself. And you get another, you get this bromonium ion. So you have Br, Br. And because of the, the shape of the molecule, they both have to be either coming out or going into the page. Um, now if you imagine this structure, this skeleton structure, to be in the plane of the page and these de wedges to be coming out of the page, then you'll see that this, uh, and sorry, this is a positive ion, this uh, molecule is vulnerable not really from the top because this, this bromine is all coming out of the page. It would be, it would be difficult for another, another molecule, another bromine, to come in from the top because that, the bromine that's already there is blocking the path, but what it can do is it will come in from underneath where the molecule is far more vulnerable. It'll come in underneath the original bromine and it'll kick off those electrons right there. So let me 
get rid of some of the clutter. The second bromine will come in from underneath and kick off those electrons because this bromine right now it's positive it's electron deficient it wants electrons so what happens is this you go from this to and this is a minus comes in kicks off those electrons and you get this the trans dibromo compound so this is coming out of the page this is going into the page now the uh, the obvious question is well why doesn't this happen with chlorine gas or or uh, iodine gas or any of the other halogens we went with why do those sometimes give cis and sometimes give trans well it basically has to do with bromine's perfect size it's just the right size to make this this geometry right here it can make that triangle because of its size iodine is too big and chlorine is too small bromine is you know kind of the at the the goldilocks spot or whatever you want to call it so let's go over just a couple more template reactions you guys have got the gist of it so let's say you had uh, this cyclohexene uh, compound and let's say there's a substitution right there just to introduce uh, regiochemistry so you hit it with BR2 well what's gonna happen gonna swing out the the uh, bromine is going to break apart you're gonna get a, a carbocation wear either here or here and of course you're going to get it at the more substituted position so you'll have a carbocation there and then that BR that is now negative actually let me back up that first bromine is going to attack and close that triangle so you end up with your intermediate that looks like this and of course they're both going out or both going in doesn't matter which way you draw it and then uh, that BR minus is going to come in from underneath where the molecule is vulnerable and knock off those electrons and you end up with your product that looks like that. So uh, that sums up uh, halogenation. Uh, next time we'll do some more or a couple more specific cases, and then we will move on to the redox reactions involving alkenes. So, ta-ta for now.